In this screencast, we will be discussing features of the mesentery. At the end of this screencast, you should be able to identify and describe common abnormalities of the small bowel mesentery and their ability to direct you toward small bowel pathology. The small bowel mesentery functions as a physical attachment of the small bowel to the retroperitoneum. Both arteries, veins, and lymphatics run within the small bowel mesentery, both supplying the small bowel with blood and draining blood and fluid from the small bowel. Often, abnormalities of the mesentery, most commonly referred to as mesenteric stranding, can direct you to areas of abnormal small bowel, which you can inspect more closely to hopefully determine the etiology of the abnormality. Mesenteric stranding is a common term for increased density of the mesentery. That increased density of the mesentery may be related to edema, inflammation, or infiltration but it is commonly third spacing of fluids within the mesentery that results in the stranding. When you see an area of mesenteric stranding, if it is focal, you should inspect the bowel within the distribution of that abnormal mesentery more closely for abnormalities such as ischemia, inflammation, or neoplasia. When the stranding of the mesentery is diffuse, that is most often related to the presence of ascites or the presence of portal hypertension. On the left hand side of your screen you can see examples of mesenteric stranding where you have increased conspicuity of the vessels within the mesentery and increased density of the mesentery due to third spacing of fluid within a segment of mesentery attaching to an abnormal loop of small bowel. Interloop mesenteric fluid is an important feature to be able to recognize on CT. Mesenteric fluid is most commonly seen as free intraperitoneal fluid and courses down the pericolic gutters or collects in the pelvis. When you see interloop mesenteric fluid, this is intraperitoneal ascites that is not loculated but is likely being produced locally from abnormal bowel or abnormal mesentery and the fluid gets trapped under the leaflets of the mesentery. It often takes on a triangular configuration as we can see in these images on the left hand side and it is often seen with severe inflammation or ischemia of the bowel. When you see areas of interloop mesenteric fluid, take extra time and extra caution to identify the etiology of that interloop mesenteric fluid because it often indicates advanced inflammation or ischemia. Mesenteric distortion is another term that I often use, and it is describing an abnormal configuration or an alteration in the orientation of the mesentery with respect to the way it should lay naturally. This is often related to some sort of fibrosis or inflammation that causes the mesentery to be clumped or drawn in to a specific location. The center of the mesenteric distortion is often the epicenter of pathology. In the image on the left hand, upper left hand corner of your screen, you see this star like configuration, and this is mesenteric distortion associated with enteroenteric fistulas of Crohn disease. In the right hand side of the screen, we see another star like configuration where you have the mesentery being drawn into an area of fibrosis related to sclerosing mesenteritis. In the lower left hand corner we can see the mesentery making a triangular configuration almost pointing to the pathologic area that's causing the closed loop obstruction. 
And in the case of desmoid tumor, a very fibrous and reactive neoplasm uh, that can be seen in the mesentery, we again have drawing or pulling of the mesentery into a central location. Mesenteric venous gas is an important finding not to miss. Mesenteric venous gas is almost always associated with severe mesenteric ischemia. It is a helpful finding to differentiate benign pneumatosis within the bowel wall from pneumatosis of the bowel wall related to ischemia. Mesenteric venous gas occurs when pneumatosis progresses from involving the bowel wall to traversing the bowel wall and being carried away by the mesenteric veins into the portal venous system. Mesenteric venous gas is easier to see on lung windows and I also believe it is easier to see on a coronal reconstruction. When you're looking at the CT, the mesentery can provide you with clues to the location of pathologic abnormality. Use the mesentery as your red flag. If you see focal abnormalities of the mesentery, look at the mesentery configuration and look at the configuration of the abnormality and you will often see the abnormality of the mesentery pointing to or radiating from the nidus or central area of abnormality. Adhesions, twists, tumors, inflammation can all cause these abnormalities. And with increasing mesenteric stranding and the development of inner loop mesenteric fluid, you can prognosticate the severity of the pathology with increasing stranding and the presence of fluid indicating a moderate to severe pathology.